something was coming, but interpretations varied. Beginning at the amphitheater and continuing into the night, Michelle sent texts to her sister seeking promises that her daughter would always be taken care of. Promise me one thing, Lexi will be happy and always have a good life, she wrote. That no matter what, Lexi will always be safe and loved. What's going on? I'm scared, Christine texted. By the end of the concert, Michelle texted her sister, I'll be there soon. The last text she sent that night was to her brother, Lexi, never forget. Several weeks after Michelle's death, the O'Connell sip. Dude, yeah, it's obvious he killed her. I mean, by the language, too, that he used in the 911 call, it's so funny because he's like, everything he just told her, and then he goes, okay, I'll tell you the truth. And then says, I'm a cop, and then proceeds to tell him the truth. It's just. Because uh, I watched uh, some th shows on YouTube about how to spot deceptive language and shit, and um, that was extremely. Uh, what he did was called leakage. And uh, that's pretty interesting. Blinks. Sean, Jennifer, Christine, and Deputy Scott met with Lieutenant Bradley from the St. John's County Sheriff's Office for an update on the investigation. They were told that the case was being closed. Hopefully this will give you some closure as to, to what occurred that night. All indications are that she was contemplating suicide based on her text. I asked the night that Michelle died. I said, am I allowed to submit a statement? Because she told me a lot of things about, and I'm just going to spell it out for anyone to hear, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. She came to my house. She said, I'm leaving. I was scared. Am I allowed to submit an affidavit just to testify to what she said? And he said, no, none of that is, it's all here. So it is with the sheriff's daughter, if you must do. Will your lieutenant of this agency stand up and answer our questions? He's up for us. You know, I'm doing the very best I can, guys, to, to show y'all what happened. I feel like this is a damn imposition on me. It's not against you. I haven't you. done anything wrong, guys. I, I, Sheriff's I, office has a vote. <laughs> and I can, I can feel at this table that there is a massive conspiracy theory. And there is not one, guys. Can I interject? What conspiracy theory are you talking about? Right? That Jeremy is the murderer of Michelle. Okay, yeah. I keep I keep getting that. 100% is, though. That's pretty obvious. And all these freaking cops are doing what they always do, bro. They're part of the good old boy fucking family and they will never fucking snitch on each other type of shit. They're literally, dude, that's why, like, some people, I remember when people used to say, like, police officers are gangs and shit. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. And then as, I, as I get older and see, like, a lot, a lot of different cases from different places, I'm like, dude, there's a lot of crazy, corrupt police shit going on in a lot of places, man. I've been getting that over the last, you know, several weeks. So what we need to do, guys, is we need to, we need to sit down and we need to just... This is what it is, but I mean, and this is what happened. In the weeks following, Scott O'Connell was fired from his role as a sheriff's deputy. His distress over the lack of action taken in his sister's case had led to angry outbursts at work, so he was dismissed. His mother, Patty, continued to work as a file clerk at the sheriff's office for a time, but described the work environment as unbearable, knowing that her daughter had been murdered and her family's pleas for justice were falling on deaf ears. By 2010, St. John's County Sheriff David Shore had been elected to his position three times. Two of these times, he ran unopposed. The sheriff was both a popular and powerful figure in the county. Eventually, following roughly four months of public pressure, he agreed to have Michelle's case handed over for an independent inquiry. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the FDLE, sent Agent Rusty Rogers to St. Augustine to reinvestigate Michelle's death, and the agent hit the ground running. He set out to fill in the gaps left in the sheriff's investigation. With no witnesses or a suicide note, the family should have been interviewed to determine Michelle's state of mind. Agent Rogers began those interviews. It, it felt like to us, as a family, that it was rushed they had their mind made up this was suicide and that the investigation could have went a different way and, and that he knew there was things in the past that he had done that she was going to report and that it was going to come out that his this deputy sheriff was not the true person that he was playing to be and that he was actually a pretty bad person to her. From interviewing family and friends, Agent Rogers learned of Michelle's recent promotion. 
that she had CPR training scheduled in two days' time, that she had plans to meet another friend, Mindy, that night, and had even popped out to the garage to retrieve her handbag in order to fix up her makeup. Oh, she was going out, too. <laughs> that was part of his problem, too. She was going to go out and meet other dudes and stuff, and he couldn't handle that. And that's who you have as a police officer, and that's who all the other police officers were sticking up for and fucking covering for, someone who murdered somebody. Like, this is insane, bro. The neighborhood had not been canvassed for witnesses by the sheriff's team. Within two weeks of